What's up, dudes? Welcome back to another FGO 4 Star Rewind, where we binge on memes for all the 4 star servants in the game. You know the drill by this point, so let's get straight into it. Burger Queen is a DPS saber, so press big red buttons and take a sport Merlin, and you're probably doing it right. She finally got her Shinjuku outfit three years after it showed up in-game. In case you're wondering why it came out so late, please understand that DW is a small indie studio with potatoes for servers and hamsters as staff. She also got an instinct buff that gives her a 20% charge, meaning that you can double MP with her if you give her Merlin Waver, so now that DW is starting to fuck over the Scotty meta and JP as if Castoria wasn't bad enough, maybe this will actually become relevant again. And don't forget that she and Lalter still have the worst charisma skills in the game. And as of recently, she's now a VTuber under the alias of Shishiro Botan, so if you could please go sub to her YouTube channel and pull on a raid up in Arknights, that'd be great. Lily Tails is probably better off not knowing what the hell ends up happening to her in the future. Imagine being in a game where there are over a dozen copies of yourself. Since she's notorious for being a 3-star in a 4-star frame because her stats are god-awful, her main use is as a wave clear since she's got higher than average MP scaling to compensate for her shitty attack stat. And since this is literally the only time when this will be relevant, let me just shill my MP11 Lily real quick. Padoru doesn't care if it's not Christmas yet. She's an arts meme saber who's got triple guts on a skill and imperial privilege, which is actually a lot less impressive than it sounds unless you give her fluffy tails to help out. They also buffed her S1, so now she's got her own arts buff, but not only does it only scale up to 20%, but it's got an environmental condition because DW keeps thinking that conditional buffs are a good mechanic for some reason. The buff did also give her a 30% charge, which you'll probably care more about if you ever bothered using Nero at all these days. Ziggard Alter beats the shit out of dragons, and not much else, unless you want a refund meme with him with his double MP generation rate buffs, because you think you're Honako, and then realize you're not Honako because you suck at the game, so you give up and go back to Skyly Looping, only to realize that Delightworks fucked you in the ass with level 90 plus nodes and Castoria. In real talk, his biggest buff is a summer costume. Chevrolet is an art stall saber, which is just as weird as her trying to sell you electric cars when Tesla exists. But her kit does give her a ton of shit to work with to pull her niche off, including a 3 turn taunt that combos with her evade to buy your team a 3 turn of no damage, assuming the enemy doesn't have evade pierce or is about to throw an AoE MP at you. It's a shame that her kit doesn't also give actual team support as well, and because of that De Aeon isn't an ideal support, but if you want to try out stall memes, she's a good place to start, assuming you're not already triggered because I'm calling De Aeon a she, even though she asks you what gender you think she is in her own interlude. And I know Agartha is a bit of a sore spot for a lot of you, but I know you degenerates want DW to put in her maid costume at some point. Ranma one half is a Buster crit meme, and he's still wondering when DW is going to give him his other half, because apparently they couldn't be asked to put Sita in the game with Lost Bell 4. He's also got an anti-demonic super effective mod, and since he's a saber, he's your resident bicorn killer, assuming you even need horns by this point. The Lightworks also hasn't given him a single buff for the past four years, unless you consider his animation update as one. So between him falling behind in the meta, and not even getting Sita in the game, his whole existence in FGO is basically one giant feels bad man. Eggplant Dad is an arts crit meme, who's his own star engine and yeets people with big boy crits and refunds himself with arts brave chains. Also, what the fuck kind of name is Adamska, and why did you marry a lolly when you're supposed to be a tits kind of guy? Chad is yet another wave clear saber with a conditional buff, but Delightworks was at least smart enough this time to give him a buff that lets him force his own condition at least, which means he can always give himself his extra buster buff as long as you remember to use his S2 first before his S1. Oh, and the charisma buff is nice too. Just don't let his face haunt you in the subreddit discord. Liz got pissed that Hololai rejected her, so she put on what she thought was a summer costume and showed up in FGO thinking that she'd become the next Suisei and get accepted into Hololive later. She's basically a walking meme, since she's a giant parody of the Dragon Quest franchise and other generic fantasy JRPGs, and her third skill makes someone from the Hamster Squad call up Exhibit to have him tell you that you like gotchas in your gotcha games. The only thing that she had going for her was the fact that she was for a time the only gold welfare saver in the game. But then Hololive outsourced her job to Eofi instead. Japanese Zoomer is as Zoomer as you can get in 2020. She dabs, drinks bubble tea, sings karaoke, yeets, and posts memes on Twitter and Instagram. You could also probably get her to play Minecraft and Fortnite, and soon you'll be seeing her flossing in the middle of a fight, which may or may not be a good idea depending on who you ask, 
considering what she's not wearing down there. When she's not being a complete meme outside the game, she's a buster crit meme who can generate her own stars with her MP, and counters enemies who like spamming evade, so if there's a Korone running around, Fubuki can go hunt her down. And daily reminder to head pat and tail fluff your very own Fubuki every day. Saber Fran is what happens when cute girls in anime don't have AC, if only that's how it worked IRL too. She's a DPS Saber who charges her MP like a hamster wheel on crack, removes buffs off a single enemy, and then beats their head in with her halo ass looking energy sword that she probably took from Arby at some point. Also, her final ascension looks like something taken straight out of Sad Panda. Ever since Liz's American cousin and the rest of Hololive destroyed his dream of a proper virtual idol group, Yago's retired himself to being a 4 star boomer saber in FGO, where he takes a seat wherever he's standing every time someone mentions the word idol around him, sips green tea out of a monster can, and complains about how zoomers are ruining the idol world. Whenever he's not watching his idol dream get shredded, Yago is an arts crit meme who can refund himself with arts brave chains, provided he gets stars from somewhere, and can debuff enemy attack to ridiculous levels, though all for only one turn because he's a boomer and can't keep it up for longer than that. Eroge Protagonist Simulator is a buster crit meme, or at least he would be if he actually had to bust her face cards. Whoever thought that giving any servant mismatched decks was a good idea needs to be Toa's desk for her stream every time she plays Fall Guys. For what it's worth, he's his own star gen using the same method that Suzuka does by using their own NPs as a burst star gen thanks to his S2 that gives him both 3 turn 100% star gen and crit buff, and set him upright and his brave chains can do hella damage especially with projection active. You might also want to give him a star white buff since he doesn't have one of his own. But as of JP's 5th anniversary, the mad lads over at Delightworks finally did the unthinkable and gave Redman what he's always wanted, a way to change his MP type to arts. And now that Castori is a thing, whether you like it or not, we're officially on the Saber route now. Green Cat is a Scotty meme, the go-to option for archer looping in fact, so hopefully you haven't been burning your spare Green Cat copies before MP5 over the months, and try not to confuse her with a green frog named Pepe. I would talk about her role as a crit archer, but not only does she suck at being that, she's only ever going to be used for Scotty memeing anyway, so I'll spare you the lecture and move on to the next servant. Shauna is a buster crit meme, except she has no buster buff of her own for some reason, but at least she can bust her brave chain unlike Emiya who's better off in the kitchen making sandwiches or whatever, whenever he's not out there going haha arts NP go She also has both an anti-divine power mod and an anti-riding super effective mod, which means they can stack hard if Shauna happens to find someone who counts as both. And if they happen to be either Saber or Berserker, she's basically their hard counter. So if you see any one of these servants, the game is practically screaming at you to use Nobu, just like how everyone except Sora screamed at the manager at the convenience store. Despacito is a weird archer who's got a 50% battery that seals his NP the same turn he uses it, has David's harp skill, and has a targeted buff removal, and his MP ignores evade and defense, and slaps its target with a 30% debuff resist debuff. All this to say, he's some sort of more expensive and more offensively oriented David, which is a fancy way of saying keep using David unless you know what you're doing with Despacito. He's probably busy recording the music video for it with Cats anyway. I distinctly remember saying last year that Anne is the closest we'll ever get to having a summer Lartoria. Well, the internet never forgets, and apparently neither does the Lightworks, so you're welcome. Pirate Giraffe is a crit archer whose gimmick involves having less health to do more MP damage, and conveniently enough, her S3 gives her an infinite guts that revives her with 1 HP so that she has a way to ensure max damage. Also, look at her third ascension and tell me that's not Maiden with blonde hair. Chloe's the type of lolly to intentionally jailbait you and call the cops on your ass because you can't stop listening to that one alarm clock about Ilya, or that free ASMR that Kadawaki Mai did on DL site. She's a single target archer with a 50% battery, making her great for both farming single target sabers and being the DPS in an arts team, and always with Tamamo, so that you can hear Saito Chiwa twice in one team. She's also welfare on top of it all, meaning that you don't need to roll for Squirtle if you don't want to. She also gets an S3 buff that turns both Ilya's and Sitanai's RNG buffs into guaranteed buffs, so now you know why it goes from B to B++ rank. 
Poochie is a lot like his sister from a different universe. They both have projection, though ironically Chloe has a better rank of it than he does, and they're both art single target archers, meaning that they share the same roles as DPSs in arts teams. Chloe happens to be a generally better archer than him though, since she has a 50% battery that also turns her into her own star gen, and has a proper evade to tank enemy MPs, as opposed to Link Park Simulator who's only got a 50% defense buff. What he does have though is an MP that pierces defense instead of evade like Chloe's does, and thanks to his skills and MP interlude does the most damage out of all single target archers in the game, believe it or not. His MP also has a high chance to charge drain for better enemy MP control, which is something Chloe can't do either. Really, the only thing he and Chloe need now are their own stands, but I guess technically they already do. Nerf's latest digital advertisement following their Fortnite collaboration involves sticking a Russian granny lolly in bikinis three sizes too small even for her, and giving her a minigun as big as she is that shoots Nerf darts that explode on contact for some reason. Yeah, uh, I swear these collaborations are getting real out of hand. Oh wait, it's the Lightworks! We've never had real collaborations! The most use you'll probably get out of her is farming sabers or something, but assuming you're still in shell hell, at least it means she'll see some use rather than none. She does also have the 20% party charge that her caster version has, so that'll be useful for farming setups with other servants who have their own 30% batteries. I am it is a crit archer in FGO whenever she's not streaming or doing hololive stuff. Stuff. With her own MP interlude buff, she's now the third most damaging single target archer behind Poochie and Evil Boomer, which means Ayame is a fucking beast, as her 1v4 clutch and Valorant should have proved already. There's not much else to say, other than Ayame loves playing games and yeeting people into the sun, and it makes sense that she was able to pull an enchanted book on her first try since she's got A-rank luck and all that. It also makes sense that Watame is always high on Asakoko because whoever came up with the design in FGO had to be on some of that good shit at the time. Who knew that Coco was already trafficking Asakoko right after Sora's debut? She's another welfare single target archer but quick this time. She also has two targetable skills that give a 20% charge and a 30% MP damage buff, so she's quite useful as a support archer in certain farming setups. And remember, <laughs> Bender is a single target archer who can snap a bridge in half and still only hit one target. She might need to work on her aim a little bit. What do you mean she's got clairvoyance? She and Miyu have the infamous distinction of being two of the rarest servants in the game because they're both limited collaboration 4 star servants, and it's not like the GSSRs in this game are doing you any favors here, unless DW pulls something out of their ass for JP's 5th anniversary. So just like Futurama, if you didn't catch her while her banner was live, she ain't ever coming back. Centaur's Husbando is a support setup archer who provides party crit damage, 15 stars, and a targetable projection, so double Chiron with a carp means that you're giving your front line full 50 stars, 100% crit damage buffs, and double projection for one of your frontliners. So just like Sheringham, Chiron is also another popular esports servant whom some people use for meme runs or turn attacks. But since those people are not most of you, Sivia's dad is also an art single target archer whose MP has the useful ability to remove his target's defensive buffs before doing damage. Why hasn't anyone made a Discord point emote with him yet? Coco's distant Hungarian cousin is a support lancer, with the double charisma for all female allies and 20% defense debuff for one target, and can act as a wave clear herself with her own AoE NP. She might be goofy and have terrible singing skills, but just like Coco, Liz is both a convenient and great damage support for all your favorite waifus. Just don't let her watch Dragon Maid, especially those episodes where Toru cooks her own tail, and whatever you do, do not pass her the aux cable. Also, I know I roast her a lot by calling her a Hololive reject, but it turns out that she got the last laugh in the end, since she's now part of 5th gen. What do you mean her name's Aloe? Feels fucking bad, man. PTRD is a buster crit meme, more so than any other saber face, in fact, since she's got the strongest rank of mana burst in the game, and has a skill that was what Instinct was supposed to be in the first place. She's also got the second strongest MP damage of all AoE lances in the game, behind only Karna, so she's also an excellent nuke AoE too. And since OG, Salter, and Lartoria all have summer versions now, it's only a matter of time before Lalter gets her own summer version too, right? The guy whose name sounds like it could be Billy Harrington's alter ego is mainly an arts looper thanks to his most recent buff that gives him his own 30% charge. 
He also has a taunt that has an RNG evade on it, unless you max level it for some reason, which most of you won't anyway. And it makes sense that he has to suck on his own thumb for his whole wisdom bonus thing, because he loves sucking his own dick anyway. It Man is a burst single target arts lancer whose skills turn him into a one turn arts crit powerhouse if you set him up right. He's also unique in that he's one of the only, if not the only, servant in the game with both an evade pierce and invul pierce, meaning that he can either deal with enemies who have both evade or invul at the same time, or be able to attack enemies with evade on two separate accounts. And if you've ever wondered why his MP is 3 hits, despite its name being No Second Strike, that's because the first two hits are actually him knocking his opponent's arms out of the way first with the spear before going for the actual hit. That, and well, low hit count MPs and FG are fucking trash. Well, unless your name is Stella. Summer Rushia might not be a necromancer in this game, but she's still gonna find you and ask you why you've been watching other VTubers, Peckle. She's also another single target lancer who specializes in softening up one enemy with her skills, so that she and her team can fuck him up the hardest just like how she fucked up her Wii U that one time. Feels Bad Vlad is yet another single target lancer, but this time he's a tank lancer with high HP, a taunt, and a loaded skill that gives him a 100% debuff resist, 40% defense, and 20% attack buffs, and a heal on top of everything else to help him make use of his high HP and protect his team. Normally his MP damage is pretty potato since he's got a low attack rating as a trade-off for his high health, but he does have an anti-evil super effective mod that has a built-in invul pierce that can make him start doing some big boy damage against evil targets. So in case you ever run into an enemy evil boomer and Sherlock screwing off somewhere, you know who to bring. The treasurer of the Caldea Lollies Club, Jailter is an AoE Lancer with the same rank of mana burst as Lalter, so she's useful as a wave clear, but not much else. She did have the distinction of being the only Welfare Lancer for a time in the game, but now she can't really say that anymore because DW's been slapping JP with a whole lot of Welfare Lancers these days, just like how Toa smacks the shit out of her desk. The OG Anna is a single target Lancer whose most useful skill is her ability to be super fucking cute. She's also the secretary of the Caldea Lollies Club, who also doubles as a club's enforcer and assists Jack for whenever they need to exterminate a lollicon, but usually she just picks on Merlin. She does have a janky 40% quick resist debuff between her buffed S1 and her NP that she can use to support other quick servants, I guess, but obviously that doesn't really mean much when Scotty's in the game, so all you really need to worry about with her is how many hit packs you can give her every day. Ethan's mom is a Buster Crit meme, who somehow a Lancer, even though she uses a katana and a yo-yo for literally all of her face cards. And for some reason, her NP animation always has her in her swimsuit, even if you have her in her second ascension stage, uh, probably to remind you why she's a Buster Crit meme in the first place. Other than being a Buster Crit meme though, Valther is a fantastic alternative Buster support Lancer with a charisma and targetable 40% Buster buff that also removes debuffs, which makes her an ideal support for any Buster server who happen to debuff themselves with their own skills or NP somehow. Heaven's Feel Simulator is one of the two premier Scotty Lancer memes, the other being the Valks, whom we'll talk about in just a minute here. She's basically tailor-made to be a Scotty Looper with a great MP charge stat, a skill with both a 3-turn quick buff and MP generation buff, and a 50% attack buff for the final wave if somehow her damage wasn't strong enough. Not that this really matters anymore when all of JPFGO is too busy Castoria looping everything to hell and back. Nukehead is an AoE Lancer and Buster Crit meme who sounds like she should be in Girl's Frontline with the way she talks. I get the feeling she'll be good friends with Deagle and Legs. And now you know why Ogura Yui voiced all three of them. The Valks are the second 4-star Scotty Lancer meme, so use either them or Parvati, whoever's stronger on your account. And no, they do not shoot Halo rockets for the AoE attacks. By the way, uh, Ortland is best Valk, so don't even at me, thanks. Kirishan's waifu is a weird survival writer who's really good at keeping herself alive and watching everyone else around her die. No wonder there's an alter version of her floating around out there. You wouldn't think it, but Thug Life is actually a Scotty Looper despite lacking any of the buffs that normal Scotty Loopers have, like her own quick buff or MP generation buff. That's because enemy casters in FGO have a built-in 20% MP generation buff that your servants get just for attacking enemy casters. While this 20% buff applies to all classes and not just riders, it's 
pretty convenient for Luna since she's got both class advantage and a quick AoE MP with just enough hits on it. And chances are, you probably have a couple of Maries sitting around in your account as opposed to an Achilles or two. And public service announcement to not let her play GTA 5, otherwise people will make videos about her dropping the N-bomb on stream just like Miko and Rushia did. When she's not punching the shit out of people, Tifa provides a party debuff removal and both reduces one enemy's defense by 30% and removes their buffs. Because of this, she's a potential setup servant, oftentimes a plug suit support, whose job is to cleanse party debuffs in a challenge quest or something and soften up an enemy target for someone else to beat up. She also has a buster AoE MP, though her low attack rating means that you're gonna wonder why I even called Martha Tifa in the first place. She did get an MP interlude buff that not only improved its scaling, but also gives her a free 20% buster buff, so it's not as bad as it used to be, but stick with other AoE writers anyway, and keep Coco away from her if you can. This is the Yuri Pirates' original form. Just like how Marin is featured as an archer in their summer variant, Rushia is the spotlight as a rider. She's a burst crit rider whose skill set intends her to use her quick brave chain as a way to generate stars, then collect those stars for herself to do big girl crit damage for one turn, just like how she beat the shit out of Pentachan, though in both cases, uh, she's not able to do that very well. Her trademark gimmick is her NP, which does more damage the less HP she's got, which probably makes a bit too much sense on someone like Rushia. The only problem with this is that this gimmick is better used on Marin since she's got an infinite guts that puts her at 1 HP if it goes off, and Rushia herself doesn't have a skill like that because she came out first in the game at a time when the devs didn't know what the fuck they were doing, probably because they were too busy watching Pekora streams. And why is Rushia both Keo Lancer and Mary at the same time? The edgiest Santa on Earth is essentially a free buster AoE rider that everyone can have at MP5 because DW knows how important caster enemies are to farm. Thanks to the Lightworks, real cool. Now when are you gonna put Santa Alter back into the game? And if you've ever wondered why she needed fried chicken buckets as ascension materials from her event, it's because they all went into her own thighs in her final ascension stage. Gigak is a bit confused as to why he rolled for his wife who outside of a raid up and burned $400 just for his ass, but hey, Astolfo doesn't have a skill called Evaporation and Sanity for no reason. Kaoru's- oh, for fuck's sake, man. Skills are perfect for him because they're both bad memes and make no sense half the damn time. His one saving grace is that he does have a 50% battery, and while he's definitely not a Scotty meme, if you give him Limit Broken Scope and a waiver, he can actually double NP without needing his S3 at max level because of how FGO automatically rounds up 99% charge to 100. Other than that, he's basically only useful for his Trephus costume and to pair up with the Saber version once he shows up in NA for double trap memes. And maybe Gigguk should learn what rate ups are in FGO so that next time, he hopefully doesn't need to burn a another 400 bucks on a trap in a mobile game and make a video to his subscribers about it. Does he know that Saber Astolfo is a thing too? Sons of Anarchy Simulator is one of the most broken welfare servants in the game, so if you don't have him now, have fun knowing that you'll never see him again until Delightworks finally stops being lazy and puts his ass into the rare mana prism shop. Why is he broken? Well, he's got an abnormally high MP charge stat, good hit counts especially on his quick cards, a 50% battery, and the ability to crit easily since he's a rider. And because he's got his own quick brave chain, with his quick buff giving a star gem buff on top of that, he's basically his own star generator most of the time too. Essentially, it's ridiculously easy for him to get his MP and blast people with crits, so it's not a stretch to say that if you have him, you really don't need any other single target rider unless you're looking for a specific setup or rider with a particular skill set. He's the reason why DW didn't put in another 4 star single target rider into the game for a whole 2 years before Ryoma showed up. The swimsuit skin Monarch will never get is the original arts refund meme in the days before Scotty memes and before Fluffy Tail's S1 buff because all you needed was Tomo's Fox's Wedding and Nero Bright's S1 and you were basically good to go. Of course, with Tomo's S1 buff, she only gets better and even better once her dad in the caster class stops by, and quick PSA that you can actually surf Charlotte for dust in case you still need some for Scotty, ironically enough. Rider Onion is mainly meant to be a second chance for players to get a free MP5 AoE Rider, just as she's meant to be Okayu's ride whenever Koren is not looking, which is why she's a rider in this case, even if she's not the one doing the riding. 
Why am I calling Ishtar Aqua in the first place again? Go watch my other video on how to use all the SSRs in the game, why don't you? Her kit would have you believe that she's some sort of crit rider with her double crit buffs, but while she can be used that way, mainly she's just a wave clear, and once Scotty hits, you can also turn her into a Scotty meme as well, though you'll need to put in a bit more effort to pull that off. She's also another one of those eSports servants whom people sometimes keep a copy of at level 1, since her first skill is quite the loaded support skill. Tarma and Oreo are a single target arts rider, the first of their kind in fact, since none of y'all ever use George as an arts DPS. Their skills don't really seem that impressive, so at first glance, they seem to be a budget art support servant in the event that Kazgill's overworked himself to death again. Their true strength, as you might have guessed, lies in their synergy in a proper arts team, since with dedicated art support, they would have had the potential to get out of hand super quick if Delightworks actually gave them better skills than they do now, and DW sure as hell doesn't want another Ryder Kintoki running around making it so that between those two, you wouldn't ever have a reason to burn your quartz for another SSR rider. Also, daily reminder to bring Oreo a Pepe every day so that she too can spam green frogs in Twitch chat. Remington got her head stuck in her Halloween costume and ended up traveling back in time somehow into another mobile game where she was the first ever welfare servant for Fate Grand Order. If only she kept her shotgun to help out with her damage, too. Costume jokes aside, Coco's cousin as a caster is mainly a wave clear with her buster AoE MP and her mana burst, and she was good at the time she was released, since she was the first ever 4 star caster in the game, so she was better at wave clearing and farming than anyone else at the time. She is unfortunately kind of forgotten about now, but hey, at least you can make a full Liz team once you get your second Mecha Liz later this year, assuming you're an FGO boomer who's wasted the last three years playing this goddamn game. Maho Shoujo Media Magica is the best dedicated healer in the game, which doesn't mean much when Merlin and Tamo exist. So, for what it's worth, she still is the best burst healer in the game, especially when she's got her own Bond C to work with, which is one of the best in the game, but again, that doesn't really mean much when most Bond Cs in this game are trash. While her niche isn't really used all that often, since the FGO meta has always generally favored buffers over healers, she can occasionally pull off gimmicky shit, like soloing full power Kiara during the CCC events, though it'll take you about two hours to do that. Yeah, trust me, I've done it myself. In any case, that's not something you should be actively looking to do, so she's best for giving headpats to and bullying Jason with whenever he shows up in NA. Cursory Rhyme is an arts crit caster with a 40% battery, so basically her whole game plan is to slap people with a bunch of arts crits, drop a whole ton of F-bombs on them whenever her MP's full, rinse and repeat. She's also got a double defense buff, a small heal, and a self debuff cleanse for a good deal of sustain so that she can keep using bad words on people whenever she's not being the secretary or librarian of the Caldea Lollies Club. My Chemical Romance Simulator is the waiver of 4 star support casts with her 20% charge and triple color buff both of which are party skills. She can even do something that Waver can't, which is to act as a wave clear herself thanks to her own AoE MP. This came in handy in the final node of the Da Vinci rerun event where she was a crucial member of one of the farming teams used there, so if you don't have your own Waver yet, Helena can act as a partial replacement for him and hold the fort down until you can get your own Waver. And if nothing else, you can pretend that she's the Tashkent you didn't get in Azure Lane. Captain America decided to become a furry in the caster class of FGO since he's already an Avenger in another universe, and because for some reason the Lightworks won't let anyone else in the game be a shielder other than Eggplant. He's got the unique ability to upgrade an ally's MP by two overcharge stages. Demonic Bodhisattva is the only other thing in the game that can do the same thing, and it's a CE. Kama can do this too, but she can only buff an MP by one overcharge level, not two. Combine this with his most recent buff, which now makes his defense buff targetable and reduce that ally's skill cooldowns by one, and the rest of his kit, and now he's definitely one of the most 300 IQ support casters in the game who demands meticulous team setup in order to get the most use out of him. It's just too bad that this won't mean jack shit to most of you since y'all do nothing but hit big red buttons all day, or complain about why you can't Scotty loot. Ilya's mom is also another dedicated healer similar to Cersei's niece. She can't heal as well as Medea Lily can or even debuff clear, but what she does have is a party guts on her NP, which came in pretty damn clutch for that one King Asan challenge quest that triggered the entire NA server. There might be another thick caster in the game now who's also got a party guts, this time on a skill, but 
Torpedo Tits is still somewhat relevant since her guts is on her NP, and thus spammable to an extent, and you can't really say no to a 4 star servant whom you can get MP5 for free, unless you're one of those fuckboys who waste their time hating a cardboard box. Egyptian Pekora is a very useful farming caster with the unique ability to charge her own MP to full on demand. This means that she can either double NP back to back to handle two waves on her own with the help of a limit broken scope, or during events, take an event CE and still be able to clear a wave by herself. This isn't really relevant if you can just Scotty loop, but not everyone's gonna have Scotty, and even if you do, sometimes it's just nice to press one button and get rid of a wave. Insta-kill isn't a reliable mechanic in FGO, but thanks to the way that Pekora's kit is set up, and how potentially deadly her laugh is, she can actually guarantee insta-death on very low-ranking mobs like Bronze Skeletons if you have her first skill at max level. Again, this isn't relevant in too many contexts, but in case you're an infinite bone hell, and you're always farming bone hunting quests every year, you might want to bring Pekora along for some bone farming despite the fact that she's a rabbit and not Korone. On second thought, isn't Pekora stealing Rushia's job here? First she steals her viewers, then she's stealing her powers in FGO? Maybe they did some kind of fusion dance or something? Actually, wait, never mind. We know neither of them can be Nidacris because she ain't flat as fuck like those two are. Summer Luna is basically Ryder Luna, except she's a better support and walks around playing beach volleyball with enemies until they all die. Choose between that or Luna kicking your eardrums in to give you ASMR. Specifically, Caster Thug Life is a sort of crit support caster since her S1 is a charisma, her S2 generates stars over 3 turns, and her MP's overcharge gives party crit damage. She's still got her HP regen and 3 hit invul that her OG self's got, so she's just as resilient. It's just that no one's really gonna use her for crit support since we have other servants who are much more suited for that job. Caster Fuckboy is an alternative art support caster in the event that you don't have your own fluffy tails yet. While he's not quite as broken as she is, he's still got an excellent kit of his own with a charisma, party arts buff, and a party skill that turns even AoE NPs like his own into burst star generators provided that they have high enough hit counts. His kit is so good in fact that he's another one of those esports servants that I mentioned earlier where some people leave him at level 60 on purpose but max his skills so that he can support arts DPSs in certain challenge quests and then die to a buster crit or two because he's got a taunt C on it. So in case he feels like he's overworking himself to death again in FGO, he can always consider a career switch into esports and start casting League or CSGO or something, I don't know. And when you use him as your main DPS in an arts team, his MP puts up another 20% defense buff for your party and puts a 20% defense debuff on all enemies to not only make your own frontline tankier, but also soften up enemies so that your follow of arts crits do even more damage and charge everyone's MPs even faster. And as of recently, he got an MP buff as well that also gives a party crit buff to capitalize on his MPs burst star gen capability, so Marie Caster is even more useless now. So in case you want to use Gil, but aren't a fan of brain dead buster memes, this is the Gilgamesh to use. Besides, he's got a costume and Archer Gil doesn't, so who's the superior Gil now? Hachama is a single target caster who, just like her niece and Pekora, can charge her own NP on demand and turn you into a Haton, uh, I mean a piglet, sorry. Uh, I guess Cersei would know a lot about being stuck on an island with nothing better to do except except playing around with her fanboys and tell them to smell her feet and call them degenerates. Because she's a single target buster caster, she's like an alternative Sanzo who's got a party debuff clear instead of a party debuff immunity. She's also got AoE poison, a party star gen buff, and an AoE defense debuff for a bit more party support, but for the most part, all you care about are all the burb memes you can make with her. Shiba Inu has been looking into Dogecoin recently with all that talk she's making about investing in crypto. So fluffy! Much caster! Very support! Wow. Fluffy Choco is unique with her S3, which double buffs both party arts and buster cards, on top of producing 10 stars instantly. Along with her charisma, this makes her a flexible support caster when your team has both arts and buster servants. She's an especially good teammate for Flare, since she can use the stars that Tichiba makes on her own to activate her own S3 that eats 8 stars, but just don't go telling Dancho that. Contrary to popular belief, Danbo is more than just a cardboard box meme in FGO. He's an arts looping caster who will make your farming for certain events a lot less of a headache. <coughs> Gilfest, 
And best of all, the Lightworks gives his ass to you MP5 for free. Though that's not gonna stop some dumbasses from burying him anyway because they're a bunch of Jean simps who got triggered that a cardboard box managed to get a girlfriend and they can't. Most of the time, Juliet's a rare mana prism meme who was better portrayed in a side event than she is normally for what that's worth. She can't even do her job properly as an assassin either, since the Lightworks didn't even understand how their own crit star generation mechanics worked at the beginning of the game because they somehow thought that giving assassins two hit quick cards was a good fucking idea. But she's not actually useless, believe it or not, even if she can't be a star gen as assassins are supposed to be in FGO. She does have a double charisma for divine allies, and her MP has a defense debuff that counters whatever magic resist passive that enemy servants have and removes their buffs. This makes her a potential setup assassin who comes in, buffs your divine servants, and uses her MP against a target to soften them up for the rest of your team to take out. And of course, let's not forget the charm lock memes that she and her sisters can pull off, which is admittedly really fun to do since between just her and Harriet, they can potentially charm a male target four times in a row. And you wonder why all the Saber bosses in Lost Belt 2 always have mental debuff immunities. But to most of you, this is a servant who will make you rage quit the game whenever you get a gold assassin card, especially when there aren't any raid up assassins on the banner you're rolling. Iron Maiden Fangirl is also another unfortunate victim of DW's lack of knowledge of their own crit star mechanics, but she's also still got her uses as a female rider or berserker hard counter thanks to her super effective mod against females. You can think of her as the 4 star version of Jack in this sense, so if Raiko has hasn't adopted her yet, maybe Carmilla will. She has been getting along with Mayo Boy recently, after all. Kavera got bored with doing Rainbow Six stuff, so she puts on a red leather jacket and goes around shanking people in parallel universes in her free time. She's a very reliable assassin who stabs people and eats strawberry haagen ice cream, and she's all out of ice cream, and her local 7-Eleven just ran out. She's an arts crit meme assassin with 30% charge and the rare ability to ignore both invul and defense with her NP, given that she activates her mystic eyes in tandem. That 30% charge also means that she finds use as a farming setup assassin in case there's a single target rider or berserker somewhere in a farming node. And now that she's gotten an MP interlude buff, which is very rare for a welfare servant to have, she's now one of the best, if not the best, 4-star assassin in the game, and definitely among the best welfare servants FGO has had to offer. What do you mean you missed both K and K events? Ilya's dad is very confused why you're calling him a dad and why the Holy Grail seems to be stalking him wherever he goes. His biggest problem is the fact that Assassin Shiki exists because they're very similar. They're both Arts Crit Assassins with single target MPs, Arts Mana Burst and Crit Buff skills, and the Inbull and Defense Pierce combo for their MPs. Hell, they even have almost identical stats. Where Shiki beats him out, however, is her MP gain, which is much better than and carries even though they have the same hit counts on their arts and quick cards, and she's got her own 30% charge while Carrie doesn't have any. This means that her MP damage output will be much more consistent, especially in an arts team, and while Carrie for a while did have better MP damage than her because he had an MP interlude and she didn't, that's not the case anymore, so Shiki is overall still the better arts assassin. He does have a few things going for him though. His gimmick is a targetable taunt, which is either unique to him or something only a few other servants in the game have which opens up some jank setups that involve him taunting someone to either have them die intentionally or have them tank damage for the team for free if you combo it with their evade or invul skills if they have one. His MP also has a charge drain which makes him a better pick in arts teams against servants who tend to charge at MPs very quickly. And for what it's worth, his invul pierce lasts for 3 turns instead of just 1 like Shiki's got, which is convenient in the case an enemy tends to spam invul skills on you. He's also just a better star generator overall, thanks to his better star gen passive, and his ridiculous hit counts, especially on his extra attack. Really, the only buff he needs now is a passive that gives him permanent class advantage against casters. How the hell are you going to be called a mage killer and get wrecked by casters in FGO anyway? Scotty in a swimsuit is like Zalter. She's a consolation welfare for the fanboys who couldn't roll their 5-star versions at some point. She's got a taunt and a damage cut, but they're on different skills for some reason. 
reason. Normally this would be weird since you'd think these effects are better together on the same skill, but the reason is actually because it allows her to be a useful taunt wall for setups against casters, since George has a risk of not dying when he's supposed to against them even at level 1. So she does have use as another one of those esports servants, where people keep her at level 1 on purpose just so that they can use her as a taunt wall against enemy casters in story fights or challenge quests just so that she dies to them more easily than Thou Art a Dragon does. And of course, she is a welfare AoE assassin with a quick mana burst, which has to count for something given that all three 5-star AoE assassins in FGO are limited. Shining Finger is a star engine with the ability to get rid of his own star weight for a turn so that his teammates have a better chance to absorb stars. It's the same thing that MHXA has, but for himself only. It's too bad that with how star weight mechanics work in this game, this still isn't very reliable for Berserkers. Basically, he's meant to be the 4-star version of Jack in terms of star gen, especially with the buff to his S2, but unlike Jack, who's got an anti-female niche on top of her star gen, he doesn't really have anything else, so he just kind of stops being useful the moment you just decide to use Merlin, well, except maybe to make Gundam references. This Gaia simulator was the quick support before Scotty, along with Green Cat and the other Skaha no one cares about anymore. She's got both a single target defense debuff and a party charisma that also tacks on a quick buff on everyone except herself. For someone who loves torturing the shit out of people, she sure got a lot of support skills. Her MP also removes target buffs, which further accentuates her support role, but the more important thing is that between her own buffs and MP interlude, Chinese Lolly easily has the best MP damage of all 4 star single target assassins and can even out damage Jack at identical MP levels, but of course this is assuming she gets the attack buff from Imperial Privilege and you know what we think about RNG skills around these parts. Oh, and I guess she's something of a crit assassin as well because her MP's overcharge gives her a crit buff that's thicker than she is, so have fun with that in case you're a fan of watching a high pitched lolly who looks like she can be in the next Disgaea game, run around dunking people into vats of poison all day. And uh, why is it that wherever I look, all I see is Rushia in this freaking game. Summer Pekora is Pekora cosplaying as a med jed because she thinks her fans are too stupid to figure out who she is. Also, her final ascension art is what her fans see whenever Pekora turns her back to the camera whenever she does a 3D stream. Her kit makes her something of a tanky assassin who buffs her own defense and debuff resist and has a taunt to take advantage of that to protect her team for a turn. The most interesting part of her kit, though, is her S3, which gives her a beefy damage buff for her NP and improves her MP gen, and since her AoE NP is arts, this gives her enormous potential as an arts looping assassin. But of course, in their infinite fucking wisdom, DW not only gave Summer Peko insta-kill on her NP, but they also made it so that the insta-kill hits before her damage, meaning that if she insta-kills any of her targets, she doesn't get any refund off them, because that's part of how insta-kill works in this game. Game, therefore ruining her potential as that arts looper in most cases. Hey, the light works. Care to explain why both King of Sons and Summer Kiara's insta-kills land after their damage? Clearly someone was watching too much Boruto when they designed Chiyome, but that's okay because she's still cute. Unfortunately, that's really the only thing that she's got going for her. She's another single target arts assassin in a game where both Shiki and Kari exist, and they have better arts buffs and MP interludes to work with, and she doesn't. Her biggest use is to be a replacement Shiki, since she also has a 30% charge in the event that you didn't play either of the K&K events, so maybe she isn't all that useless. If nothing else, you can always keep her to put together the Ayaneru Club on your account with Kao Sushi and Avril Lavigne's biggest fangirl, or you can have a little family bonding time with Shuten Doji. Speaking of Naruto, Donzo's now an FGO too, but this time as a cute robo waifu who can update your Android phones for you and take care of Kotaro for some more quality family bonding. When she's not playing Apex, Roboko is a kind of alternative support assassin who has two skills that not only give both an evade and an invul, but they're also both targetable, meaning that she can protect both herself and another teammate at the same time, or defend herself against enemy MPs twice in a row. Unfortunately, she doesn't really have anything else. If her S1 was also a party buff, or if at least the star gen buffs on her evade and invul were for three turns instead of just one, then she'd be in a better spot. What she does have is an AoE NP that's super effective against demonic enemies, so you can use her as a wave clear against them if you don't have anyone else, though I'm not exactly sure how you'd end up with a story locked servant like Roboko 
before you have someone like Tota. Y'all already know about this dude, you know, that one Zerk the entire subreddit Discord totes as the best Zerk ever because he's got triple guts and literally never dies and shit like that. While he can do that, keep in mind that his bond CE is the thing that gives him triple guts, so good luck farming that bond if you haven't gotten it yet by this point, or if you're not a rainbow apple burner. He's also got the Ku syndrome of being really good early game thanks to his strong survival skills, but becoming less and less useful the more your account gets developed, since since the FGO meta tends to emphasize big damage dealers and setup teams over servants whose only job is to survive for a long time. Or you can literally disregard everything that I just said about him the moment you realize there's a fully grailed perk sitting on my own account. Mesh's dad when he's off his meds is your answer to the question of what do I do if I don't have Dante's for Scotty looping since he can do a lot of the shit that Dante's can. All you need to do is get his MP level as high as you can, at least MP3 or higher to be safe, get his S3 to at least level 9, give him super scope, put on 2k4, and you'll be good to go. What do you mean you don't have half of this shit? Catdog, who pretends she's a fox, has just as confusing a playstyle as her identity, and no, before you ask, she's not Scotty compatible. Her attack buff is only for two turns, her charge drain only has a 60% chance of actually doing what it's supposed to, and while she's actually got a decent amount of survival effects, she's not Herc, so those will only keep her alive for so long. And most annoying of all, her NP stuns herself, though at least she looks cute when she's napping, and I'm sure that's all of some you care about. She does at least get a buff for her S3 that lets her guard against her own stun once, which is nice, but overall she's basically only useful as a single wave clear if anything, and for fulfilling your fantasies of killing enemies with omurais. Will the real Shirakami Fubuki please stand up? Kyoko's a nuke AoE, just point her in the general direction of a wave of three enemies, and she'll probably jump in there screaming her head off and blasting him off like Team Rocket. She's actually got the highest based AoE Zerk damage in the game, thanks to her higher than average MP damage scaling, but this ignores the fact that God Juna exists. She's actually Scotty compatible too, but because she's got the Tomcat problem of stunning herself with her NP, you need to give her either BB or Nightingale to counter her self-stun. And if you want to know what she really sounds like, go look up her old voice lines on YouTube and listen to how much of a fucking savage she was. 50 cal Beowulf is a crit zerk, thanks to his instinct buff that gives him star weight, crit damage, and additional stars. He's still basically a one-pump zerk though, who does a ton of damage one turn, and then just kinda sits around hoping his guts can keep him alive until his skills can come back again, but at least now, he's got crits to either give him another turn of additional firepower, or to make his buster brave chains hit just as hard as Kana Gorilla does. PSA to all of you admirals out there, this is what your Congo turns into if you leave her alone at base for too long because you're too busy playing Azure Lane. For the candy crazed little gremlin that she is, Banana Oni is actually a rather support oriented Zerk who's got a party charisma and a buff removal on her NP, and she's got disengage and a double defense buff to keep herself alive for a bit without you having to babysit her since you do enough of that already bribing her with chocolate constantly. And, uh, yeah, try not to give her Doritos and Mountain Dew, because then she'll turn into D.Va next. Speaking of gremlins, Lolly Aunt is a welfare AoE Zerk who's better at annoying you with her voice that breaks your eardrums than she is as an actual Zerk. She also took a leaf out of Musashi's book and ate out of a holy grail, and because of that, your Gouda 3 experience got twice as bad. Still, she is a completely free MP5 AoE Berserker, which probably counts for something, though too bad her NP isn't two seconds long like Paul's is. Also, I know I memed Marie as Luna earlier in this video, but Honestly, on second thought, she'd probably fit better as Chacha in FGO instead. Just like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos is also a servant in FGO in his free time, but she doesn't appreciate Tesla calling for her company get broken up. You're real lucky you're not tagged as a mythological Greek male in FGO, Tesla. Corporate jokes aside, Penth is an excellent party support with both a party buster buff and charisma, and her S2 gives her up to 20% charge per turn for 3 turns, giving her use as a strong face card farmer, single target zerk, or even as a plug suit support in case you don't have anyone else better for buster buffing. And of course, remember that Amazon Prime still has that service while she'll come to your house and kill you for free. Nobu Zerk is formidable when she's not at base doing maid stuff. 
someone needs to draw a formidable wearing a buster shirt at some point, I think. She's basically a meme, walking around wearing a buster shirt, doing a best Shauna impression in her third ascension, and pulling a Ralph in her final stage, walking out of the flames like a hotshot because cool girls don't look at explosions or something like that. Ryo still thinks she's naked for some reason though. She does have an anti-divine super effective mod and she's single target so you could probably get some use out of her with that. Her MP now got buffed to give herself the burning battlefield environmental condition so that she can trigger her own conditional buff, which is good because there are only 11 free quests in the game where she could even use that otherwise. Grumpy Cat looks like she just walked straight out of a comic cat with that tram stamp, but she'll get along just fine with Jalter during the summer. She just might... Uh, have a bit of an existential crisis if she finds out about Jailter. Yeti is a crit zerk, which shouldn't be surprising since her regular self was meant to be a crit archer, but here she's got a single target MP. Jessica Alter also has the party 50% quick buff, which is nice until you realize Scotty exists. By far her best use is to make anti-lollicon emotes of her on Discord whenever you see people talking about lollies, so that way a very angry cat dressed like a police officer shows up in chat. <laughs> Summer Tifa is a DPS ruler, which is normally a strange role for a ruler to have, unless your name is Amakusa, and even then she's honestly more of a DPS than he is, with a berserker deck, and the fact that she's one of the few summer servants, if not the only one, to have an MP interlude buff. This makes her both a strong and tanky DPS, thanks to a ruler class, assuming you don't mind not having class advantage most of the time. Since rulers do have class advantage against Moon Cancers, she was pretty much the best servant to use against BB in her boss fights during CCC, and if she shows up again in Summer 3 and for CCC rerun, you know who to use again if she hasn't learned her lesson from the first time around. But since you won't be fighting Moon Cancer enemies most of the time, Coco Killer finds use instead, bullying anyone or anything that's a demon, divine, or undead thanks to her 100% power mod against them. And because she's got a 30% charge, she's great great in heart farming setups in Shinjuku or Salem if you need some more hearts. Mama Snack is the final stage in Medusa's Pokemon evolution. She's extremely rare to find out in the wild because she's a story-locked Avenger, but if you do come across one, no steppy please. She's a buster crit meme who can now actually use that role properly thanks to her S1 buff that gives her star weight for her buster cards. The attack buff on it also got buffed so that she can better put it to use over two turns instead of just one in case her cards get split up. She's also somewhat of a farmer because of her buster AoE NP, and that 15% party refund she gives with it can come in handy for certain servants who might need the extra charge in her team. By the way, Asakawa Yu, the voice actress for all the snacks, has a Twitch channel and she loves streaming Soulsborne games, so let me simp for her for a moment, just like how I simp for VTubers, and tell you to go check out her channel at twitch.tv forward slash Yu underscore Twitch, link in the description. Mio is another crit Avenger, except she's not as good at it as Avenger Boomer is because of her 2A 2Q deck. She's also got insta-kill mechanics, which aren't really relevant on anyone other than Egyptian Pekora, unless we're talking about Mio's wheezes whenever Subaru's involved. What's a duck in German again? Mio does have a targeted buff removal on a skill, so she can be something of a sport avenger, I guess, if you don't have anyone else who's got a buff removal for some reason. And she's also got evade pierce on her MP, but mainly she's useful for giving head pats too because she's a good girl. Hopefully you come back soon, Mio. BB Gun is a welfare hybrid support moon cancer who can fuck with enemies with a stun and hard defense removal skill, support teammates with a targeted debuff cleanse, heal, and one-time debuff immunity all on one skill, and beat up enemies herself with a skill that gives her both star weight and crit damage. She's also the president of Caldea's airsoft club whenever she's not busy fucking around with her sisters or something. Why didn't she just make her class an archer? She's another possible esports servant thanks to her S1, which is her debuff cleanse and immunity skill, and she can use it to turn Fran into a Scotty memer in case Fran's the only Scotty looper you have. You can also put her into an arts team and bully Avengers with her, but keep in mind that she's one of the few moon cancers in the game, so if you don't have her yet, hopefully you got her 5 star version with Summer 3, and if not, well, you'll just have to wait until CCC rerun, or God forbid the 
main fucking interlude. Taiho Alter is a tanky alter ego with a taunt, except the only thing tanky about her is, well, you can kind of see them for yourselves since her HP rating isn't as high as it could be for someone who's got a skill that literally calls her a masochist. Her skills do give her both a defense buff and damage cut, mitigating incoming damage when she taunts. Just remember to use her S1 first before her S3 since her first skill gives a 3 time debuff block for the self stun on her third skill. The buff she got to her S2 also makes her stronger the lower her health is past half HP, but mainly you'll be using her as an alter ego wave clear if you aren't already playing her in crosswave. Mechaliz is such a huge reference to old school Godzilla and other kaiju movies that Koran is gonna show up at some point to play whatever game she's in. They're another welfare Escher class servant, two of them technically, and DW explicitly put them into the game so that everyone would be prepared for Abby once Salen dropped a few months after Halloween 3. Other than bullying foreigners, the Mechalizes are solid single target alter egos in their own right, with massive 60% MP damage buffs for themselves and the ability to become crit alter egos if you give them crit star weight buffs. Just make sure to use their S3s first before you apply any defensive buffs on them, including evades and invuls. One cool thing about them is that if you play both their original and rerun events, you can actually get both of them, and since the game treats them as unique servants, even though they're pretty much the same except for their voice lines, personalities, and paint jobs of course, you can put them both on the same team, making a full team of Cocoa Puffs possible. And last but not least, we've got the Eggplants, one of which is clearly better than the other, and no prizes for guessing which one. Part 1 Massachusetts is a great support 4 star, being a defensive support who can keep the team alive for way longer than they have any right to be by stacking her S1 with her MP, and her taunt gives her absolutely cracked MP gen to make it hilariously easy for her to supercharge her MP once every 6 turns. It also has a 30% attack buff for her team and she can cast a targeted invul with a 20% charge, making her truly worthy of her shielder class. On the other hand, unfortunately, part 2 Zuikaku is what you get when you try making her do her best Megumin impression in FGO, because she tries turning herself into a buster crit meme when, as a shielder, she's not supposed to try being a DPS. Her MP also loses its 30% attack buff, further reducing her original utility as a defensive support with some offensive utility. Now, I get that all this is supposed to be lore-based and shit like that, but I wouldn't mind it personally if they didn't fucking force you to use her like this in all of the scripted Lost Belt 2 fights, like those fights where you have to take whoever's on support into your front line. To be fair, she at least has a double taunt effect, but she had to lose her targeted invul and her crack and P gen for it, which, in my opinion, isn't worth it. Basically, use her in her part 1 form in anything not Lost Belt related, and you'll be fine, unless your name is Sato Kazuma and you like seeing her go haha, buster crit mean lol. <laughs> And that's it for all the 4 star servants in the game. Thanks for watching me meme the shit out of them for the third year in a row, I guess. And now this is the part of the video where I start shilling my balls off. Now that NA's got the follow feature, feel free to follow my support list if you need a whale to carry you through part 1. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here and the past editions of this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more memes like this. I also stream FGO and other degenerate gacha games over on my own Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash toasniper 98 so drop me a follow there to catch me live sometime. As always, thanks for watching, and until next year, deuces. See you.